Yeah, it looks nice. Yeah. So this one is a tuku with me, and the tuku with me, this example that I'm holding here. On the back end, the back and the front are all the same. It has only one view. The back view is the same as what the front view. If you need a weaver, sometimes it's funny if you want to identify the back and the front. Yeah. Yes. Because we create the designs to cover the back and the back, the, the background. Over here is a design somebody has ordered. So over here, he is using what? Uh, six headers. Six headers. And this particular club, in the whole world, we have only 10 people who know how to do this particular club. So this crown is fact that Pente is what? Originated from what? Bullway. This background is used to be the first colorful background that the people discovered. That they call it Oluko Mai background. The red, the yellow, and the green. That's the Oluko Mai background. So this particular club, for making like 60 inches, like what I'm holding, it takes a week. I'm too ready to ask how yeah. long it can take. It takes a week. Whilst the one that my dad is doing over there, it takes three days to complete what? 60 inches. <laughs> Firewood lighters and leave it on fire for four hours. So first four hours, you have to take the particles out. So I need to break those small one. Careful. Hot, hot, hot. I'm gonna use this one here for you, so everyone can see it because you are not there. So after four hours, if you look here, they have the big basket out and the small one here. They use this to sieve. So you use this one to sieve it or to strain it like that. Because you have to take the particles out for you to get it like much. You have time, you get your firewood, you get your bag, you get your water. You don't add anything to it. And you take time, so the more you cook, and the water needs to go down. So that you get this color for me. Yes. And during this, you can't get a calabash to stand there, use yab or cassava to do the printing. But these days, you know, calabash tree is strong. So it's not easy to break. I 
Walking through this village, y'all. Yeah. Just got done eating, so we're trying to walk off some pounds. So it's hot though. My hair look a mess. Per you. <laughs> he finna drive right past us. We should have took the bus, but we decided to exercise and walk. But it is what it is. It's hot. This is our city tour bus right here. Whew. Some of the older people stayed on the bus. That's younger folks, which is me, and a couple others um, decided to walk. In the journey of prayer, in the journey of something else, but it's a a, a quick walk. He said.
three, two, one. To the left, you should see the ocean. everybody um, we are at Cape Coast it's a little cloudy here this is my outfit that I'm wearing a little African print with the gold and then my shades and then my hair I had to put my hair down because it was getting hot but we're about to go have breakfast and then meet up with the crew more tours more tours more tours and it's probably gonna be a half a day but a half a day is basically like 4 p.m. probably. Alright you guys, so I had to change my outfit to an all-white outfit because the place that we're going to is like a sacred place or something to where they was uh, requiring that we wear white so I had to change. So um, I didn't have anything white, but uh, it is so hot and humid. Y'all can see the humidity is down on the ground. Literally, it's super hot. But um, I'm walking back to the breakfast area where the ladies is. We're gonna go to the bus. I literally have not been able to talk to y'all at all, like this whole trip. So I do apologize if things are like skipped around or like bouncing around from here to here. I'll probably do voiceovers or whatever, but everything's been all go on go like 14 hours a day so i literally did not have any time oh shoot i'm leaving shit i just left my bag at her house hold on okay so this is the key at the resort that we got it got like the african print on it and then they have a key but ours was like a regular key cart but 
I got my Louis bag with me, but that's just so I can have it on the bus. <sighs> oh my God, it's so hot. I'm dying. <laughs> my hair is a mess. I was gonna get my hair braided, but I just don't have time. Like by the time the lady was gonna come to the hotel to do my hair, we was leaving, checking out. So we've been staying at hotels like every two days. So we're checking, which is 29, okay. We'll check in for two days, explore the city for like 14 hours a day. And then we'll check in again, we'll check out and then go like two hours away or maybe three hours, five hours and then check in another hotel. So we just checked in this one last night. Hold on. What the heck? There we go. Whew. I left my purse. <laughs> yeah but um we just checked in this one last night and um we got in so late that we didn't get a chance to record anything so i'm sorry if i haven't been able to record for you guys but like i said it's just been insane hold on this door is crazy but yeah um oh i was about to say it's locked. Whew. Okay, so this the outfit again. <laughs> and that's what I had on the little print. But yeah, um, so I'm gonna just meet them by the bus because it's probably eight o'clock now. It was just like seven. I got out there like 7.30 to eat breakfast. But um, I had to go change, like I said. So I'm absolutely loving it here in Ghana. Like Ghana is just, it just feels like home to me and they're very welcoming very hard working um very well educated people and it just motivates me to continue to be educated when i get back to the states because they work so hard like they literally bust their ass over here <laughs> hustling doing what they need to do just to make sure that their land is uh secured and taken care of um, it's a lot I feel like that could be done with the community, but I don't know. But I'm actually, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it a lot. So, y'all, I don't got my regular tripod, so y'all got to excuse if the tripod is moving up and down. I'm just rambling my mouth right now, but I just haven't been able to get on the camera to talk to y'all. So, later. <laughs> This ocean is beautiful. It's so gorgeous. Oh, the pool just looks amazing. God, I'm just loving this. Ah! I just feel like I'm at home, y'all. Like, I am in Africa. Ghana, specifically. And my Ghana name is Abana which means I was born on Tuesday. So I just been rocking my bracelet. They literally be making these by hand. It says Ebena. I gotta save, save some video space for later, so I'll talk to y'all. Here, the Mill Dungeon, the British Hills, the church. 
Oh, How ironic. So that's the church, church right here. Yeah. So the, the name of the church is Society for the Propagation of the Gospel. Uh -huh. And Society for the Propagation of the Gospel well, is an Anglican Church of England. Oh, yeah. <laughs> To the left, to the left, you can hold on to the wall. This part is slim, so you can hold on to the wall. That floor we are standing on is not part of the original floor. So that's that's the reason that we were all supposed to be walking on bricks. We we're all supposed to be standing on bricks and not just that floor. So what happened to the floor? Why can't we see bricks all over? Now there's been many African men here over the years. So these actually, if you take this, it will give you percentages, just like you do the ancestry deal. Give you, you know, the African men who ended up here were not only from God, so they'll give you percentages like five percent. No, all right, you see, I can't see you. You see, you see, you see, you can see, you see, So good. Yeah. Now that cell is a, a sick cell. Many African men in this male slave dungeon got sick, very sick. Some got blind in here. The others that got very weak. So the
They were losing weight on their way to the dungeons. In the dungeons, they kept on losing weight by the time the ship arrived. Due to the weight loss, each captive could get fresh through this door. At that time, the sea or the ocean was up here, was starting the struggle. <laughs> we made it. We made it. He is hot and sweaty. Like, yes. oh my god. <laughs> my hair is a mess. Hey guys, what's up? It is your girl Casey. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. And if you're a returning subscriber, welcome back, boo. Y'all, your girl hair looks extremely, extremely crazy. Um, because this heat out here in Ghana is like crazy. But um, I actually just got out the bathtub, so that's what I look like. I'm half naked. But um, I washed my hair last night and I flat ironed the top of it because it was crazy. <laughs> but um the plugs in here they don't really have plugs like right next to the um the mirror in the bathroom or whatever i don't been to like two or three different hotels you guys so i've kind of literally been living out of my suitcase like for the past two weeks it's been crazy i'm here at the accra whole city hotel um <clears throat> smack down in the city of accra and um i just got out of the shower washed my face brushed my teeth um looking a little crazy whatever but i'm about to get my day started it's kind of late y'all it's actually like 11 o'clock a.m here and i was editing videos i can post the last the first video of y'all seeing me packing i was posting that video because it was no wi-fi for like a long time but um yeah so we're back at this hotel which y'all saw before so this is where my grandmother is sleeping and then i'm on that side and i have so much clothes i need to wash y'all i'm about to order room service so um since i missed breakfast and then of course the refrigerator which y'all saw before in the other hotel is just a different layout the closet 
we got clothes over there there's a bathroom i mean there's like an actual toilet in there and then the bathroom is here um so this is pretty much how everything is looking in the bathroom it's been super crazy but i'm about to just get dressed um probably go downstairs actually i'm gonna order room service finish editing my videos and then we'll go downstairs later but um i just been trying to clear up a lot of space because your girl just haven't had no space left on her phone but i'm trying to get my nails done and i was gonna try to get some braids but i was like i don't feel like taking out this sewing so i'm gonna just leave it like this but as y'all can see they don't have like no plugs or anything right here for me to do my hair so i literally had to plug my hair I'm gonna plug my curling wand up over here by the TV and just do my hair. So yeah, that's what I got going on and I will see y'all a little later. <laughs> oh, no, <Nicole. laughs> oh, yeah. oh no, My name is Yvonne Patricia Ben Macuzeri. Uh, the strip scanner tells me that an intellectual knowledge or an intellectual awareness is not sufficient to understand the intergenerational trauma that people of African descent have faced because of their capture, enslavement, and sale across the middle passage. We need both an intellectual uh, understanding as well as an emotional contact in order to heal ourselves and establish for others to come how to deal with the historical realities of enslavement. Ghana. It has been an honor and a blessing for me to be here at this time. I celebrated my 60th birthday here and one of the very special moments for me was visiting a village, meeting chiefs, having a prayer done there and being able to dance here on African soil with the drums. Everything it was just an amazing day. We also visited the Slave River and it was very moving that day where we learned how our ancestors walked for months and just before they were uh, offered up during the transatlantic slave trade they had to bathe in this river and we ourselves had that same opportunity and then we honored our own ancestors so there are so many things to say but all in all it has been an amazing journey and my name is Sharon and what I experienced on my trip to Ghana was educational and uh, years I've read books um, written by different um, authors and referring to the things that happened in the slave trade um, which they call the transatlantic slave trade but I learned the truth on this trip uh, what was really the most heart-wrenching for me was when they showed where the bricks were covered in blood 
the most heart wrenching was just to see the blood, the blood over the brick. Where we, when we stepped in, we thought that it was just the floor, but to learn that it was the blood of our ancestors that was spilled there. My name is Florence Sparks, and what I like most being here in Ghana is finding out the resilience of our people, our ancestors, um, our, our, our black people today. We continue to be resilient, uh, resourceful, strong, and powerful. My name is Patricia Ely, and I'm here in Ghana. We're leaving tonight. We just spent 10 days seeing some horrific things. We saw the tunnels or the uh, caves which our ancestors had to live in for a number of days and suffer through heat and no food and no clothes. It was just horrible. And then they went through the gate of no return, of which we who are here today are ancestors of those same people. So we have to never ever forget the struggle that they went through just to get here, just to be here. Not that they wanted to be here, but they went through a struggle and it was really heartbreaking. I'm super excited to have attended this trip to learn so much more about our history in the land of Africa, where we are originally from. I was super excited to attend the slave castles to really get the experience and feel where um, our ancestors had died and their blood was shed. And then we was able to go to the different chief castles to show that we were kings and queens before we were stripped of our identity. And then also learning about the different fabrications and everything that they make and the different meanings behind it, the symbols, the religion that they have here. So I'm just super excited to have learned so much about the land and everything about our history that was stripped from us before we were given European names and things like that. So I'm just super excited to be able to come back to Africa and walk the soils of Ghana that our ancestors have walked. And it was just a great experience and I think everybody should experience it. Y'all, I really haven't been able to do any intros or anything on my channel, so I do apologize if I wasn't able to like jump in and talk to you guys, but it is so hot. <laughs> We're here at this restaurant. Oh, Buka. I think it's called Buka. But I'm gonna put everything on the screen, everything down in the description box or whatever. So if you guys are ever in the Ghana area and you wanna go to a nice, good restaurant that has like great food and the presentation is really nice, as y'all can see in my background. Everything's really, really nice here. I don't be having time to come on camera to show you guys everything and explain everything that what I got going on for the day. But um, basically, we're about to go to the airport. We were looking a little crazy. I just got on this t-shirt because this is literally all I have left from like all my clothes that I need to wash and stuff. And I got my little waist beads on. But yeah, I'm in the bathroom. This is like a little bathroom area. So I just came in here just to um, film real quick and do the intro to this video. So I'm gonna talk to you a little bit later. I showed y'all some snippets and clips of the restaurant. So I'll talk to y'all when I see y'all. But we get, we get ready to fly back to the States tonight. It's currently two o'clock, so we're eating. And after we're done eating, we're gonna get to the airport. I can finally get some Wi-Fi, edit my videos, do what I need to do. And yeah, so I'm gonna talk to y'all a little later. I do apologize again if I'm not able to do any voiceovers or talk to y'all, but I'll talk to y'all when I'm able to talk to y'all. Bye.
Rose. As we finish our safety check, please let us know if you have any questions. As we get ready for takeoff, please settle in. And from all of our crew, thank you for flying with Delta.